when did it click that you're saying, you know what, I'm going to do residential real estate and, 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 and build a team around me and a culture around me where people are going to be open and curious and transparent and, and so on. Yeah. So I think when you are working for someone else, and you, you see this all the time, so I'd love your thoughts on this. Sure. Yeah. When you're working for someone else, you want to see yourself in their role one day. Right? Because it's natural career progression. You become your boss. Your boss becomes their boss. That boss becomes the CEO one day, and then the CEO retires. Right? So there's, you're constantly moving up. And here I am working in New York City in commercial brokerage, which I'm so grateful I had that opportunity to do because I think it toughened up my skin. There's very little now that riles me up because I saw some terrible things when I was working in New York. Um, it was basically everything you think of in... Wow. Commercial brokerage, That was right? the culture. The culture <laughs> was... Um, like the doggy cult- dog kind of? Um, yeah, I mean, it was like a lot of... Uh, it was a huge brokerage shop, and we had an open floor plan, right? And there were all these different divisions. So you've got the hotel division, and you've got the financing division, and you've got the office guys, and you've got the, you know, you've got the retail people, et cetera. But people would always turn the papers over on their desk because they didn't want people in the same company to know what they were working on oh. because it was they would steal their client. And I thought, wow, I don't really know if this is this is me. I'm not I'm not sure I want to be my boss one day. I'm not sure that I always want to be looking over my shoulder to see that the guy next to me is, you know, looking at my desk when I go for a meeting. And I thought, I'm not sure that this is really who I want to be when I, when I get older. I'm not really sure that I want to broker these enormous deals. I, I, I looked to, you know, mentor, you know, people who are my bosses there. And I thought, I'm not sure that I can do business the way that they do business. Not that the way they did it was wow. wrong. It was just different than the way I wanted to do business. And so I think it was that, and I laugh about this now, um, but I was 29 at the time, and I think it was like this crisis of turning 30 and being like, oh, what am I going to be when I grow up? Is this exactly who I am going to be? And it was a combination of the two where I thought, I've got to get out of this, but what am I going to do for the rest of my career? Yeah. And so I was living in New York City. I was living in the East Village. I had this tiny little apartment. It was a one bedroom, and I was paying well over $2,000 a month to live in this walk-up rental apartment. And I had bought a condo in Old City years previously. And I was renting that condo out. And I had this, it was a beautiful loft. I actually still own it. It's an investment property for me now. But I bought it in 2007. And I thought, I want to move back to Philadelphia. Step one is I want to move back to Philadelphia. But then I thought, well, what am I going to do? How, like, what will I do? So I had looked at my career and I had had experience in valuation. I had been on the buy side as an investor for Grosvenor. I had gone to grad school. I was on the sell side representing sellers in New York, um, selling hotels. And what I really- You passed the real estate exam. Yeah. (laughs) I had a real estate license. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? Like, yeah, what do I want to do for the rest of my career? And what I realized was that I love real estate. I had at this point been in it for eight years. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. What I loved about real estate and still love about real estate is that every deal and every piece of property is different. And even if you're selling in a subdivision, two houses look the same. They're not the same. Yeah. It was just so unique. And I loved like the value creation of real estate. And you know, you can take this house, for example, you can do X, Y, Z things to it. You can create this value on the other side. So I loved real estate. I loved people obviously. I loved putting transactions together. So I thought, okay, well, what can I do with those three things that are really going to make me happy? And what I realized in my late twenties, when I was working in New York and I was selling these, you know, hundred million dollar deals, I wasn't money motivated. It wasn't getting me out of bed anymore, what I was doing in New York. And it was like these huge deals would close. And I thought, all right, well, great. You know, another one, another one. And I thought, gosh, you're so unhappy. Why are you so unhappy? So what I realized was that I wasn't money motivated. I was motivated by helping people. I was happiest when I was helping people. So I thought, okay, I love real estate. I love people. I love putting people together. So I know I want to be somewhere in transactions. But that's when I made the switch to residential real estate. Because in commercial real estate, if you're lucky, you're buying more than one hotel in your life. But most people are not. And there's not that long-term relationship 
and there's not that long-term you know, satisfaction, which I have every single day, of being able to help people with the largest purchase of their life.